It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right. Well, but they say, you know what? I really, we want to exit at 35. Okay. What would make that possible? So I said, okay, well, we've already shown that we can't live at your pre-retirement living expenses. We can't live at $60,000 a year. So let's see, if we retired at 35, what level could we live at? So we had full-time equivalent, Daniel, kind of give us some ideas on, all right, let's think about base case. And this is what we said. We know that the poverty line in this country exists right around $18,000 of annual income. So if you wanted to be someone in the FIRE movement that really subscribed to like minimalism and you're thinking about like really living on as little as possible, is it possible to live at the poverty line about $1,500 per month and retiring at age 35? So again, we're going to retire at 35 and we're going to live off of $1,500. All right, well, it gets us a little bit further than 60,000, but even doing that only gets us out to age 62 before we start running out of our resources. So 35, if all we're going to do is save 25% of our income for that 15 years or 10 years of work and then try to live off of as little as possible, doesn't work. Yeah, and who wants to live at the poverty level? I think that you have to... I mean, we got to kick this up a mm-hmm. little bit further so that somebody actually can enjoy the stage of life that they're in. I completely agree. But again, we, we want to answer all of John and Jane's questions. So they say, okay, if it doesn't work at 35, can we do poverty line at 45? Does that work? So again, we say, okay, we're going to work till 45. Could we live off $18,000 a year? Okay, well, it does change it and it does provide some money at the end of retirement And again, to kind of do our due diligence, we have to run this through a Monte Carlo to see where we fall out, to see if we have a a probability of success that actually works at age 45. And you can see that our probability of success living at the poverty line at 45 takes us to 99%. But I agree with you. It doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to work really hard for about 20 years only to live on as little as possible for the next 45 to 95 for the next well, 50 years. We know there's there's a basic equation with any financial decision. You mm-hmm. can either spend less money or you can make more money. That's right. That's really, those are your two, if you're looking at the fork in the road moments, well, if you're at the poverty level, you can't cut any more That's expenses. exactly right, yep. So is there an opportunity, if you don't want to live at poverty level, where you can go make some money? So here's what we said. Okay, what would be required? All right, if, if 45 at the poverty level works, but poverty level seems unrealistic, what if we doubled that? Instead yeah. of living off of $1,500 a month, we said, let's live off of $3,000 a month. Now, $36,000 a year seems better. pretty reasonable. So if we increase our expenses to $36,000 a year, we still get to the end of the plan. Now, there is a sliver. Instead of you know, remember, if we did the full thing, we'd leave this earth with almost $4.7 million. But now we're only going to leave with about 400000 But we got to the end of the plan via straight line. Yeah, but when you stress test that, that's yeah, going to be scary. That's exactly right. We have to go back to our Monte Carlo simulation to see, all right, what's our probability of success if we're going to live off of $36,000? Yeah. It's 77%. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. So you may be asking, okay, well, guys, what percentage would make you feel comfortable? I kind of like mid-80s. Mid-80s. You know, I think mid-80s is kind of where I'm at. And I, I'm back to the thought that even at $3,000 a year, I mean, at $3,000 a month, mm-hmm. there's got to be a better way sure. to, to kind of consider this. And so maybe that's, is that going back to work? Is that, there has to be a better way. But. So there's this other part of the FIRE movement that's called barista FIRE. These are the folks that want to stop doing their like normal day job, but they're not unwilling to work. So what we said is, okay, let's take John and Jane and let's assume that when they retire, they're willing to go work at Starbucks because that's kind of the thing that year. I get to go be a barista. Or a gig economy Or a job gig or economist. Uh, a like gig economist. Uber driver, Lyft driver. <laughs> uh, so let's assume that they can make $10 an hour working part-time. So they both work 20 hours a week, $10 an hour. What happens if at 45, when they retire, they can start... Uh, doing some barista side hustles. Looks better. Well, now it looks a lot better. If we check the Monte Carlo to see, does that improve our probability of success? You can see that our probability of success success actually goes from 77% up to 98%. Yeah. So that makes a pretty big difference, right? But they say, okay, well, I was willing to work. That sounds great. Uh, But what if I actually want 
to have the additional living expenses. Yeah. What if I, I don't want to live off of $36,000 a year. What if I want to still live off of $60,000 a year? Would working at Starbucks allow me to do that? Would having the barista income let me do that if I chose to start doing that at 45? Mm. Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. The assets do take you out to age 82, which is much better than some of our previous iterations, but it still doesn't get you all the way to the end of the plan. So if your goal is to live off of the living expenses you had pre-retirement, and you're willing to get a side gig and start working at age 45, it's still not quite going to cut it. So you made an interesting observation, Brian. You said when it comes to making financial decisions, you really have two options. You can make more or you can spend less. I'd argue there's a third one sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. If you have big goals and you've already exercised making more and you've already kind of cut the expenses as lean as possible, the other option you can have as it relates to FIRE is you can be a really aggressive saver. Yeah. So we talk about, hey, we want John and Jane to save 25% of their gross income. Well, John and Jane may say, you know what? In order to make this FIRE thing possible, rather than only saving 25% of our income during our working years, we're willing to really beef that up. And what I mean by really beef that up is not only are we just going to do 13% to our 401ks, we're going to go ahead and max them out at the full $19,500 each. So that takes our total annual savings to about $51,000 a year or about 50% of our annual income. So if I'm willing to work until age 45 and I'm willing to save 50% of my income from zero until 45, and when I get to 45, I'm willing to go get a part-time job working at Starbucks. Does the plan work? Well, you can see now we end the plan with about $1.2 million left over, pretty healthy margin. If we run it back through our Monte Carlo simulation, again, this is running through a thousand different iterations, assuming additional savings, assuming getting a side gig, we actually have an 89% probability of success. But that has you working. So that has think you about working. Because think about this: We're, this is essentially like a fat fire type person where they're going to really hyper save while they are working. But then when they get to retirement, they're not going to fully retire. They're going to continue to work. Mm -hmm. Does that the, does the fat fire or somebody who's willing to really put the pedal to the metal on savings? Is there a way they can do that at 45 without working? So without working, okay, so let's say we take off our barista income. We actually do exit. We're still uh, going to be living at double the poverty line. This is the 36000 Can we do that? Ooh. Or at that seventy six? It's close. So you so maybe need to save a touch more. We either need to save a touch more or think about spending a touch less. And remember, we're still not at that point where we're actually living off of our $60,000 a year goal. But, okay. but you were saving 50% of your income, so odds are you're not actually needing 60000 So maybe that is a realistic scenario. But John and Jane are super ambitious. And they say, okay, we got an idea for you guys. We thought this through. Mom and dad have said that we can go live with them. <laughs> Mom and dad said that we can make our $100,000, but they're going to let us live with them for the first 15 years. right? Uh, they're not going to charge us any rent and they're gonna cover our groceries. Uh, and then Uncle Sam said, you know what, John and Jane, we really want you to be so financially independent, we're not gonna charge you any taxes. So you're gonna find a way to save $100,000 a year, 100% of your income. What, what I think is a better, because government doesn't let you out of taxes, mm. The, the better suggestion is you have a relative that's going because that's usually when CNBC runs an article of somebody oh, okay, who paid off three hundred thousand dollars of debt in two years. Sure, what they fail to tell you is typically there's some family economic support mm -hmm. where they're giving you twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year in gifts. So here's the big question: if they can generate, whether it be through gifts or whatever else, a hundred thousand dollars of saving from age twenty five to thirty five, and their goal is to live off of sixty thousand dollars per year. Does it work? No. The answer is no. It only gets them out to about 58 years old. Yeah. If they said, okay, well, what if I wanted to live off of less? What if we did that? Could we live off of $36,000 a year? Okay, maybe that gets you there. 
I think what we're seeing here though, and this is what we would try to explain to John and Jane, hey, based on where you guys are, wanting to be parts of the FIRE movement, I don't know that the 30s is going to be your key.